What's up guys, I'm DK Wrestler, and in today's video, it's a brand new edition of Cop Up or Pass Up. And for those brand new to the channel, Cop Up or Pass Up is a series where I look at a certain set of Funko items and determine via the detail of said item, my own personal reaction, and the overall hype of the Funko Fanatics on whether each of these items are worth getting or not getting. And today's video will be all about the recently announced WonderCon 2023 exclusives. Now I do want to mention for this video that we will be talking about just the Funko Pops only and not the sodas and other products which will be mentioned in another WonderCon related video in the coming days. Which we might as well kick off with the regular power line from a Goofy movie, Pass. And the reason for that being is that although it is a cool looking pop, I feel like because of the amount of items being overshadowed in the Funko Shop section of the shared retailers list that this might be lost in the shuffle since there are a pretty cool amount of items that are being shared on there. Plus, there is one that I think will do much better than this one. And we might as well move on to that. That being the Diamond Collection power line that's a part of a pop and bag bundle, which I will say cop for this. And of course, one of the biggest reasons that I say cop for this is because of the fact that every pop and bag bundle made before this was always some sort of limited piece count, whether it was 3,000 pieces or 5,000 pieces. And I think with that limited piece count, it will be a huge advantage of how this will sell. Even though people don't really like the Loungefly products all that much, they're going to get it because it is a limited piece count. Next up is Lotso from Toy Story as a part of that new classics lineup, cop. Now, Although I do have a bit of obviously a favoritism towards Toy Story, I have a huge wall right here of Toy Story Pops. I think the main reason is because we have not gotten a Lotso Pop in 12 years. And now we have a brand new version of Lotso here in a little bit of a better posing. You get a little bit of a premium package with this where it comes in this tin container and you got the card and stuff to go along with it. I mean, they are classifying it as 25,000 pieces as if it was actually a low number. Number, but it is still cool to see a brand new Lotso Pop so that none of us have to pay hundreds upon hundreds of dollars or thousands upon thousands to get that Flock D23 version. Now we have it in this version. The next pop is the Hercules with figure from, of course, Hercules Pass. Now I think we may have seen the best of Hercules Pops already and I feel like this one was a little bit meh especially because I feel like there are some characters that haven't been made into pops yet that I think definitely deserved to be made before seeing another Hercules pop and I mean people are excited but also personally I'm not too excited about this. Next up is the Cinderella with trays from the Disney Princess lineup. Now, although this is a really cool Disney princess pop, it's not just your regular Disney princess in a gold dress that's going to be shared with the Funko shop. It's a brand new design of a Disney princess pop, and it's cool because you got the trays on the hands and the head. But I feel like this is going to be one of those ones that are for sure going to be lost in the shuffle, and that there's going to be so many made that they might end up dropping the price of this at some point. Next up is the Flick on Dandelion Pop Deluxe from A Bug's Life. Cop. Now this one may be a little bit of a hot take, but I think that because there aren't that many of Bugs Life Pops and we haven't gotten them since that wave of three Pops, that the set might actually go up a little because we have a new a Bugs Life Pop. And especially even though it is a flick and not a new character, it's still cool that a moment like this is being acknowledged and it makes you want to go and get that rest of the set. So that way you get the entire set since now there are only four pops instead of three. Next up is the Poison Ivy from the Batman lineup, Pass. Now, although this is a very detailed Poison Ivy pop, I do feel because it's being shared to a retailer like FYE and Sunrise Records here in Canada, that there may be a little too much pops for this and that it's going to be flooding the shelves a little bit. I mean, if a Simpsons pop like Kearney for New York Comic Con can flood the shelves of an FYE, then this pop definitely will flood the shelves. Next up is Hedwig with Letter from Harry Potter, and I'm going to say Cop. Now, although I don't really like this pop that much, considering that it's just a regular headwake and now it's got an object in its mouth, the only reason that I am saying that this is a cop is the fact that at 
the moment, it is going to be limited to 3,000 pieces. Once again, it's that limited piece factor that's going to drive people in wanting to buy this pop, especially if you are a person that just buys pops to flip them on the secondary market. Because it is a piece count like 3,000, it's going to make you want to get it more. So if you're able to get this for the, I believe it's $15 US retail price when it launches on the Funko Shop, I would say definitely cop to get it now. Otherwise, unless you're a huge Harry Potter fan, do you really need it? Next up, we have both of the Freddy Funko Pops, both the baseball and clown versions. I'm going to say cop. Now, a lot of people are really excited because we have not gotten Freddy Funko Comic Con Pops in quite a bit now. I don't remember the last time we may have had them. It. So it's really cool to see the return of Freddy Funko Comic Con exclusives. And you got two pretty decent ones, the baseball going to the Funko shop, and then the clown version will be limited to 1,500 pieces, thus making it a convention-only pop. And you can only get it while in Anaheim, California at WonderCon. I like the clown one a bit better, but these are some pretty decent Freddy Funkos and are worth getting. Next up, we have the Gelatinous Cube from Dungeons & Dragons, both a non-glow and a glow version. I'm gonna say cop. Now, this was very surprising because I thought they were both one pop and that was just glow in the dark, but it's two separate pops, which I guess it's not too bad. I like the idea of the glow in the dark effect for certain reasons that I will get into when we have a podcast on WonderCon releasing later this week. The original gelatinous cube from Emerald City Comic Con 2020 was really awesome and so revolutionary for detail as terms to a molding of a pop. And now we have this one which kind of is a little bit better as terms to the character inside of the cube instead of just a skull. You have a full on body and even the hand is like partially escaping the cube. I think they did a very great job with this. And I can't wait to see videos of people actually showing off the glow in this pop because I think it will turn out very cool. Next up, we have the One Piece Pops of Trafalgar with Polar Tang and then Ustus Kid. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but both of them I'm going to say cop. One Piece has been really killing it as terms to Funko Pops lately, especially the huge wave that we got from Funko Fair a couple months back. And now we have some cool Comic-Con exclusives and it's definitely a cop because of the rides portion since the last two Luffy Pop rides from New York Comic Con and CCXP respectively had sold like hotcakes. They're gonna want to really get this to go along with the other two rides if they have already had them. Next up is Satoru Gojo from Jujutsu Kaisen, and I'm gonna say pass up on this. Now this pop is a little bit disappointing because it's very plain and simplistic compared to a lot of Comic-Con exclusive anime pops. I mean, even the one we got from SDCC in 2022 was a bit more detailed and it's just a weapon in the hand. So I feel like they could have went with something different as terms to the anime slot of these Comic-Con exclusives, even if it was like the 7,000 Goku or Vegeta Vegeta, I would have been more appreciative of that because at least you're getting detail of that unlike this character. Next up is the scroll as Iron Man pop comic covers and I'm going to say pass up on this. Now even though a lot of people are praising this as one of if not the best comic covers that Funko has done, I do feel like because it's being shared to a retailer like Target I believe that this is one of those cases where it may be notorious for flooding the shelves a lot and they may want to make so many to where oh a lot of people are going to get this this, but they might not actually and it might go down in price later on because of how many there is. I mean it is cool as terms to the character and it's something different but at the same time there are people out there that don't like the concept of the comic covers. I do like some of them and this definitely is one of the better ones but I don't think it is like the best. Next up we have to wear it from Moon Knight and I'm gonna say cop. Now there are a lot of factors to why I said cop for this. First off is the fact that the overall hype of the Funko Fanatics, they really like this character and especially Moon Knight was a popular series and at least it's not just a glow in the dark version of a pop they already did. And once again people are freaking out because it's supposedly going to be limited to 3,000 pieces which is weird because they announced it as a Target shared exclusive and there's never really limited piece counts at Target unless of course it's a Target con exclusive but even then they have not made limited piece counts for Target Con but it's just so weird so as I'm recording this video I don't know if maybe that's an error and that it's Target shared but it's not 3,000 pieces or it's 3,000 pieces and that it's meant to be shared somewhere else but nonetheless the detail of this pop is also really cool so regardless 
I think this is worth copying up, whether it's a limited piece count or a non-limited piece count. Next up, we have Lord Kryler from Ant-Man the Wasp Quantumania, and I'm gonna say pass up on this pop. Now, although this is not too bad, considering that the actor that plays this character is, of course, the legendary Bill Murray, but there are a lot of people complaining because this character only makes uh, a short amount of time as terms of screen time in the movie, but I do appreciate these kinds of characters being Comic-Con exclusives, considering that certain characters that people want and there was certain characters that they wanted in the comment section should be saved for a wave two of common pops and not a Comic-Con exclusive. But this pop, this isn't too bad, but I feel like it's gonna be flooded when it gets shared to the Funko Shop, while there's so many other pops that are better than this being shared to the Funko Shop. And the last pop for WonderCon 2023 is the Groot with Detonator from Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. Pass up on this pop. Now, this one is a little bit meh. I understand why they did it is kind of like a little bit of a marketing scheme and promoting the upcoming Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 that's coming out in May, I believe. But I felt like they should have made this pop literally around the time when that movie was made, which was like 2017, I believe. So even if it was as late as 2018, I think I would have been fine with that pop releasing them. But now we are in 2023. So a lot of people aren't really caring about this anymore, unless you are a huge fan of Groot and that's all you collect. And I feel because I believe this pop is being shared to Walmart, this will be a pop that kind of floods the shelves and it will end up dropping in price eventually, especially on the Walmart website. Anyways, guys, that's gonna be the end of today's video. If you enjoyed this edition of Cop Up or Pass, up definitely like comment and subscribe let me know what you're planning on getting for wondercon 2023 and i'll see you guys in the next video one two three i'm out of here